audience ready? Yeah. yeah. Cook CCS presents Hecabe by Euripides and Demigod by Richard Legravenes. I have been watching you, Odysseus, hiding your right hand under your cloak, turning your face away to ensure I can't touch your cheek or make any other embarrassing gesture of supplication. Supplication you might have to obey. You needn't be so frightened. You will not have to answer to the god of supplication. Not on my behalf, at least. I will follow you of my own accord, Odysseus. I want to follow you. I want to die. For were I not content to die, I would be a woman clinging to the lustful shreds of her life. Why should I want to live? I, whose father ruled the whole of Troy. I was nurtured in the sweetness of great hopes, bred to be the bride of kings, indeed the cause of no such small rivalries between suitors as to whose hearth and home I should grace. I ruled over the women of Troy, and when I stood among the women of my country, it was I who drew everyone's gaze, equal to the gods, only subject to death. Today, now, a slave. The name itself makes me sick. I will not get used to it. And then, these questions. Who will be my master? Me, the sister of Hector and of so many other great Trojan warriors? Perhaps a man who revels in cruelty. He will force me into the household to bake the bread for the house or to sweep the house. Or will force me, among other slaves, to go and sit at the loom. And finally, some other slave bought cheap at a market will come to me and soil my bed. I, who was once deemed fit for royalty. No, no, freedom. Free, I relinquish this light. I assign this body to Hades. And so you may take me, Odysseus. Mother, no gesture, no word. Help me to accept death before I suffer indignity. Death is the happier course, for where there is no honor, there misery lies in wait. I just want to apologize for yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I was just confused, you know? I mean, two years. What's a person supposed to do? Do I have a nervous breakdown? Do I start a new career? Do I go off and have an affair with O.J. Simpson? <laughs> I just... I felt so ugly, you know, and I don't mean just looks, I mean ugly. But then you held me, and you grabbed the back of my neck, and you kissed me, and you said all those things that you said, and I felt okay again. So I did our laundry, like I always do on Sundays. And in the middle of folding our bed spread, I noticed your jock strap in the washing machine. It was going around and round and being mangled and manipulated into all sorts of painful positions. It looked like it was crying out for help, her little body. <laughs> and then, the strangest thought. I imagined, I imagined that you were still in it. <laughs> the jock strap. I mean, I was hysterical. I mean, I couldn't stop laughing. But then, but then, all of a sudden, I could hear you in it. So I ran over to the machine, I lifted the lid, and I could hear you in there, choking on the Clorox too and the lemon fab. And so I shouted out, Frank! Frank, what is it? What are you saying? And the manager of the laundromat came out and said, Lady, if you don't stop screaming at your watch, I'm gonna have to call the police. <laughs> and that made me think, Frank. That made me think that maybe I'm not handling this too well. I can't drop two years of being lovers and going back to being friends. We were never friends, Frank. We slept together on the first date, remember? <laughs> and I know you wanted to leave us on good terms by telling me you still love me and all, but I really think it'll be easier for us to break up as enemies. It will be easier for me to hate you openly, instead of being so adult about it, you know? I don't want to be your friend, Frank. I loved you, but I never said I liked you. And being adult about it means throwing me away for that slut rat you picked up on the train platform? <laughs> and the mature thing for me to do will be to rip your face off. Oh yes, that feels much better. <laughs>